In this video I'll be going through the workflow of creating this low poly Spartan helmet. So of course the first thing that's essential to me is reference images. So I have lots of different sources, there's a ring, there's artistic work, there's even tattoos and it all helps to give a, a wide variety of reference. So the model is fairly simple. I've got a solidifier modifier and a mirror modifier and you can see this top section just here is just a subdivided cube with the bottom face taken out and then I extruded the edges and pulled them down to make this. I've also used a hand-drawn background image which I drew up from my reference images. So the first thing I do is duplicate the model, so I've got my base model, and subdivide it just by adding loop cuts around the place and then I smooth it out to make sure it's nice and smooth and there's no lumps and bumps. Then I subdivide it again and smooth it out again. This is also the multi-resolution modifier, it doesn't deform the mesh. Then I add the multi-resolution modifier. and I start using the crease brush but hold down control so it becomes the pinch brush and I should have tidied up this tiny edge at the bottom there before doing the multi-resolution modifier. I have a wide variety of alpha brushes that I've got from lots of different places and don't always use the ones that say metal I'm using a stone brush at the moment on a very low setting and it gives a sort of warped bashed feel to the metal I'm using some scratches as well for some dents, another stone brush. I start off mirroring across the x-axis, then I get rid of the mirror later on because it will obviously look too symmetrical. Once I'm happy with the results of the brushes, I go back to a crease brush and start drawing in my own dents using the draw brush with control held down to make uh, the crease brush bigger and wider. And once you finish the sculpt, now I'm just making sure my low poly is exactly the same as my high poly or as close to as possible with the grab tool in the sculpt brush. Next I create a cage to go round the high poly. It's good to use a cage, you get much better results with your normal maps. I tidied up that end point near the nose, which I should have done earlier. And now I'm marking the seams around the edges. And unwrapping, and I kept missing bits off with the seams, hence the unwraps look a bit strange. And then I found out where the areas were and then managed to sort it out. I make the outer islands bigger than the inside of the helmet so they have more detail. I'm also trying to sort out any stretching just here. So now I'm setting up a new map to bake the normals to using my cage. If you want to learn more about baking, there's a card in the corner now. So from the high poly to the low poly, 
selected to active with a cage and it's given a good result. I plug it into the principal shader and I was a bit nervous about using this for the painting but it actually showed the normal map really well. So it's great now we can plug into the principal shader and we can start painting colors and see the normal map in the background which is fantastic. I use just a sort of goldy brassy type texture to fill in the whole shape to start off with then went around sorting out the seams you can see the results there obviously it looks a bit too bright at the moment but we'll sort that out in a bit now I'm doing a roughness map or a glossy map depends how you call it in fact this is a glossy map even though I label it roughness map so the white bits are glossy or shiny and the black bits are rough and that will plug into the roughness node in the principal shader. Again I'm using different textures and it's great to be able to see the normal map in the background so I can paint in the right places. I'm using the line stroke method at the moment and just drawing around the edges where there'll be uh, more shine. And also on the bits that have got dents in. So the edges of those are give it a white texture so it shines more and the insides of them will have a black texture so it seems more rough and therefore no reflection. I spend a fair bit of time on this map because I think it's really important. I'm still experimenting with the workflow, so I was trying different texture maps to see if they'd work. And I'm fairly pleased with the results. I might have even spent even more time on this map in future, and possibly do the color map first before doing the glossy map. So now I'm adding some variation in the colour. The textures are from textures.com. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. I'm using the multiply brush and the screen brush to make lighter bits and darker bits. And trying to get a nice lot of variation in my brush using different textures for different areas. The brushes didn't always react how I was expecting at times. 
trying to use a texture with a screen and multiply seem to be a touch difficult. And there we have it, the final render. After plugging each of those nodes into the principal shader, please leave a comment if you've got any thoughts on the workflow or if you do anything differently. I'd love to hear and learn more about different workflows and the way other people do things. Thanks for watching.